All right. Hey, good morning, folks. Once again, we are back taking a look at the tropics. Today is Saturday, August 16th, 2025. This is your morning update on Hurricane Aaron. And, you know, if you watched yesterday, you'd say, oh, well, you said you weren't going to be back this morning with any more information on Aaron because it was just going to not be a big deal. Well, uh, you would be right, dear viewer, but uh, we have a bit of a development on our hands. Aaron is a Category 5 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale this morning via the National Hurricane Center special update at 11.20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So looking at the current 11 a.m. advisory for Aaron, uh, maximum steam winds were 155 miles an hour. Aaron has exploded in intensity overnight. Now, we have to remind ourselves Aaron's a very compact hurricane, and compact hurricanes are very prone to fluctuations, much more so than large hurricanes. So Aaron was able to take advantage of a perfect little window last night and has rapidly intensified throughout the evening. Hurricane hunters, both NOAA and Air Force Reserve, have been in there nonstop overnight. Just troves of valuable data. I just cannot thank those people enough for their their commitment. You know, they're out there on a weekend just flying this thing nonstop. They're literally high-fiving out the window with the plane as one goes in, as one's coming out. Uh, but again, they found this winds 155 and then an essential advisory at 1120, uh, another pass made it through the eye of Aaron and they found that this is a category five with 160 mile an hour winds. The deepening rate over the last 24 hours has been probably pushing the upper bound of the Atlantic basin in terms of how fast the storm can intensify. It has been pretty incredible. So let's take a look at that current aircraft recon AF 308 in there right now. They just handed off from Noah's, uh, hurricane hunter mission. So Noah's track earlier today really shows what was going on. So that 950 millibars falling to 927 through three or four core passes. So this is probably over two, maybe three or four hours if you really want to be generous, uh, depending on exactly when. I mean, we could look at the drops if we really wanted to. But basically, in the course of a couple of hours, Aaron managed to deepen from 951 to 927, which is an astoundingly, like, eye-waterly wateringly fast uh, deepening rate uh, for the especially for the Atlantic Basin. This is something we typically only really see in typhoons over in the Western Pacific, if anywhere. Um, and then AF-308 got in there afterwards, handed off 936. You actually see there was a period where they were probably flying in it together. And then uh, their last pass was down to 920. But if we look at the drop sign that fell into the eye at 920, besides this ridiculous dew point depression spread in the mid levels of the eye wall, again, indicating that latent heat release and uh, deepening of the profile, we also have a 920 pressure reading, but at a east southeast wind of 50 knots, which means 920 is not the central surface pressure. That means that you have to correct that downward from 920 because these drops don't always land right in the eye. It's kind of imperfect to throw it out the back of the plane and expect it to drop in the dead center. Um, you get that reading, you have to correct that because if you're at 50 knots, that means you're not in the calm of the eye. So they actually extrapolate that down to like 917, according to the Hurricane Hunter or Hurricane Center information, which gives you a 917 millibar pressure reading. And anything sub 920 is getting in really rare air. I mean, we're talking single like digit 908, 909 is when we're really pushing the upper bounds. And then a few storms have made it into the 890s, like Milton last year. Um, uh, Camille, you know, Wilma, that that's Dorian, that the uh, Labor Day, that's when you're getting into like that really, really rare air. So uh, Aaron has a, a small window here to at least push for some all time record, you know, at least especially in this part of the basin. I think Maria is probably going to hold the record in this little slice of the Atlantic. So I think uh, Dean and Alan are kind of more over here. But uh, this is definitely going to be one of the strongest storms that ever passed through here. And Puerto Rico and the Northern Virgin Islands are incredibly lucky that this did not come through 50 to 80 miles further south. Now, again, a reminder that, again, Aaron is a very compact hurricane today. This is the current satellite presentation. And the Northern Islands are basically like right here up under this uh, flow. And um, you can see that they're definitely getting some rain bands and stuff, but that core of activity is sitting just north of them. I mean, if this thing was 30, 40 miles further south, they'd be having a really bad day. But uh, tropical storm watches remain up, some, some gusty winds, but probably honestly just some bands of rain on these islands. They're probably not getting hammered all that bad. But that core of air, I mean, just that beautiful cirrus canopy and uh, that pinhole eye coming out. So you can see it here. It kind of looks a little more ragged last night. Uh, but 
but we saw that wrap up after multiple bursts of hot tower convection spinning around that eye. We had clear inflow channels uh, to this from the southeast. We had dual outflow structure to the north and to the south, and uh, this thing was definitely primed for a rapid intensification run. We talked about it last night on the page in a more detailed post. Did, uh, didn't think we'd wake up to this, though. As you can see, those bursts of convection come off, and then they chase around the storm. And then, you know, they kind of takes a minute and then another burst happens. And then you see that, that CDO and eye wall just build and build and how, you know, that stadium kind of look it has to it. Now you're seeing those even colder cloud tops starting to appear. Now, what we might be seeing is the beginning of a dual eye wall structure. It's you know, not really something you would ever, you know, completely call on IR, but there's some trends that an outer eye wall could be starting to form. We, we might need to watch the microwave imagery very carefully because the eye looks like it's very much starting to shrink just uh, strength just a little bit so an eye wall replacement cycle could be underway which would end this rapid intensification cycle for now uh erin will likely begin to grow in size and especially as she begins to turn more poleward she definitely will be growing in size over the next couple of days erin is going to become a very large hurricane which may end these cat five runs but until the environment degrades at all erin is going to still have uh, plenty of room now one of the, the curious trends we've watched very carefully today is the track of Aaron intensity and track are tied together and one of the biggest problems we still have with these storms is trying to call intensity which means our track can only get so good we, we feel like we got a really good hold on track if a storm behaves nowadays but when they don't behave like this it throws flies in the ointment. You can see what we're talking about here. So this is, on Weather Nerds, this is overlaying the satellite with the last model data initialization. And this is always gonna be behind because the models are always gonna run six, eight, 10 hours behind the actual real time of the storm because the storm models have to gather the data, process the data, ingest the data, make the forecast, and then push it out. It's like a newspaper, you know? You, can, you have a data, you have a news cutoff at midnight to have your 8 a.m. paper go out, right? So the, the models work in the same way. So what we've seen is that the models have been very behind uh, this this trend, and Aaron has basically deviated south of all of the ensemble guidance. Now, in those last few frames, you can see that I lift a little bit. You see it dip, 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 and then it tries to start lifting a little bit. That could be a recorrection. A lot of times you have these wobbles, you have these short-term movements, and we don't want to get too carried away, but it continues to show that Aaron is wanting to ride that south and west periphery of the forecast, a trend that has been doing for some time. This is not new. Aaron has been doing this for a while. This is Tomer Berg's website showing all the plots. And after the first few runs, it is continually tracked on the far edge of the ensemble guidance. And it's constantly had to correct just a little bit further south and a little bit further west, what we've been talking about over the last couple of days. So does that really mean anything? Well, in the short term, it does because, again, Aaron is feeling outflow, uh, a flow from the north right now. So kind of taking you back to current time here. I'm not sure how well this is going to look on the actual video, but you can see this narrow upper high here kind of sitting over the central Atlantic and the flow coming down out of the Northeast. So a very, very strong Aaron is being pushed harder by this really high upper flow. If Aaron was even a decent storm, but wasn't a category like three, four, five, it probably wouldn't be feeling this flow nearly as much, but this, it, it's like the further, the taller you are, the deeper you can go in the river, the more you feel the current type thing. This is what kind of Aaron's doing in reverse, just going up instead of down. So it's getting pushed harder by these upper winds, and these are not going to relent for the next couple of hours. Now, as we look at a little more sensible steering flow level and take this out a little bit, Aaron is still expected to move around this break in the subtropical ridge. You can see the ridge here weakening down, the nose becoming less prevalent and allowing Aaron to begin to turn northward. So we still anticipate Aaron is going to turn north. This has not dramatically changed the forecast, but this was not in any of our models, even though like the H fast, H worth, our high res um, hurricane models missed this by a mile. I mean, they were all in the 950s right now, and Aaron's at 917. So, even as good as these models are, man, they just, I mean, my goodness, that's so crazy to think that it was able to do that. But again, I remind everybody that very, very small storm and, and little tiny hurricanes like this, when I talk about the core of the hurricane, a 10, 15, 20 mile wide uh, hurricane force wind field, they can do this. They can kind of go crazy. So, 
Um, what are we going to look for today and tomorrow? Okay, so number one is does this track resume? Does it get back on forecast track? Does it at least come back within that spaghetti profile? If it does, we're okay. We're just going to have to keep looking at that cone and realizing, hey, this might come a little bit further west. The good news is that we still have some real estate for west. We, we have a little bit more room to wiggle here. It's not like any westward shifts are going to be going to be horrible for the eastern U.S. It's still got a lot of real estate. There's a lot of water between Bermuda and North Carolina, especially when the storm's not that big right now. The problem is if you have more energy, you're going to have a bigger storm eventually, and you're going to have a little bit more energy within that storm. So if Aaron continues to ride the western periphery of this cone and say comes in right here, you know, this could be close enough for some some more direct, you know, maybe some very outer bands and really could help increase that rip current swell wave uh, surf threat and really even the coastal erosion threat to parts of Carolinas. Uh, Georgia, Northern Florida could all get pounded pretty good by as Aaron passes by, because again, this is going to become a much larger hurricane as we go into early next week, this Monday, Tuesday turn. When storms turn poleward, the uh, vorticity kind of gets pulled a little bit and everything kind of wants to really increase. And oftentimes this is part of being in, intertwined with a jet streak and an upper jet aloft. That will also cause uh, vorticity and it will also cause the storm to expand outward. So you've got a couple of different things going on that tell us that Aaron's going to be a lot bigger as it comes through. So uh, definitely keep an eye on this in Bermuda and, and uh, North Carolina. Probably decent news for you in Bermuda. This will probably pull it further and further west. But uh, we don't want to see any too many more westward corrections but as long as Aaron behaves and gets back on track soon in this little this little run ends I think what you'll see is these little steps where it'll kind of just ride this western side of the cone for now and then we'll just have to see how it gets up in there to see where it winds up but uh, yeah guys uh, Aaron category five hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale today pretty confidently called to you by the hurricane hunter so this is going to increase our category five record for another year and uh, it is the first major hurricane of the season and the first Category 5 hurricane of the season. So Aaron went ahead and set every uh, milestone that we had for the Atlantic this year. And again, this is going to move off to the west-northwest. It will likely weaken at some point today, but then could become a Category 5 again or at least remain a powerful Category 4. Uh, after this eyewall replacement, it's always unclear if it's going to maintain that intensity or if it's going to or not. We think wind shear will pick up a little bit. That might keep it just below this intensity, but... Uh, very impressive storm and uh, still got room. Still got plenty of room to shoot this gap. We're not worried yet, but we're just going to keep watching these trends and make sure they don't continue. And uh, we will hopefully have this thing cutting out west of Bermuda and the Carolinas. And again, uh, long term track looks pretty good still, especially up there in Maritime Canada. I know we got a few people up in Nova Scotia. Um, and then they've been looking at this carefully, but it looks like when that turn does begin, it's going to be pretty sharp. So hopefully, you know, you guys will also be in the clear right now on the model guide and suggest that. So yeah, that is hopefully what we're looking at. We're just going to keep monitoring it. And Hey, if anything else goes crazy, we'll be back here with more information. So until then guys, uh, follow the Facebook page for daily updates and thanks for watching and have a good one.